Hello, Icon fans. Okay, we're back with another cast. This time it's Shalka versus Haiku on Desecrated Temple. So this is so Shalka is in the north and Haiku is in the south. Both players are going to be choosing their races pretty soon. Haiku is paused. He is choosing his race. We will see. He's playing Vekir. So Haiku is playing Vekir, while Shalka, on the other hand, has not chosen his race. He is random. However, he's always random. So we'll see what the game chooses for him. The game has chosen for him to play CISO. So Shalka has been chosen to play CISO. So CISO versus Vekir, we haven't seen that. Mostly, we've been doing a lot of testing with Brecom, at least I have, so not a lot of CISO versus Vekir recently. And anyway, both players setting up their economy rather quickly, or will be soon. They're paused, setting up their perfect starts. And once that's done, the game will definitely begin. And I'm just gonna take the opportunity to talk about this map. The map Desecrated Temple is, as I mentioned before, basically an Akron port of Lost Temple in StarCraft. Before I played Akron, I was really big into StarCraft Brood War, played on iCub all the time, and played StarCraft 2 a bit during the beta, but I wasn't... I still prefer StarCraft Brood War, I'm kind of weird that way. Anyhow, I made this map and a few other maps, because I wanted to see how StarCraft Brood War and Akron differed in terms of economy management and map design, because I was aware of a lot of the principles of map design in StarCraft, but of course Akron being totally new and there only being a few map makers, it was hard to tell what the map design principles were in StarCraft, and when I started, the only map available was Ice. So, I started out, and when I did this, I realized very quickly, doing this map, that Akron and StarCraft are not at all alike. The thing with StarCraft is that your economy growth rate is limited by the number of command centers or nexuses or hatcheries you have, because you can only build one worker per building. I mean, really, hatcheries you can build with the three larvae, but when you're building continuously, in practice, you're basically building this at the same rate as the other two races. So, in that case, your economy growth is completely limited to how many of those buildings you have, and those buildings are really expensive. So expanding is a somewhat costly endeavor, and it takes about three minutes or so for your expansion to pay for itself, I believe, if I recall correctly. With Acron, on the other hand, it takes about 70 seconds for an RP to pay for itself, and RPs can be built in parallel. You build as many RPs as you have as LCE for. So once you do that, Really, the amount of time it takes for one RP to pay for itself is the same amount of time it takes for any number of RPs to pay for themselves. So it turns out, in practice, Akron's economy is much closer to Command & Conquer rather than to StarCraft. In terms of in Command & Conquer, when you take a new Tiberium field, and I'm talking the Tiberium series, uh, Red Alert sort of is like this too with Yor, but when you take a new Tiberium field, you just build your, I think it's the refinery, I can't remember the exact name of the structure, and a harvester will pop out and that's about it. You may build a second harvester from a war factory, but you basically, once you start getting to a field, it's, like I said, one or two harvesters and you're done. You're saturated the field. Or saturated the number of processors you have. That is about as close to Akron as you can get for any strategy game that really exists now. So my later maps are a bit more the Command and Conquer paradigm where you have a lot of resources in each base, but the bases are really far apart and you don't have a lot of expansions to go to. It works out really well in practice. But T Desecrated Temple, on the other hand, the map here is quite different. For Cecil versus Vekir, it should be fine, because both players will be able to expand about the same rate. Vekir is a bit weaker in expansion, but Grecum was having the biggest problems. So, anyway, Shalka, back to the game, is building up ATHCs from his factory. He is building up RPs in his expansion and his main, while Haiku has just spot or will be soon spotting Shalka, as he has a Shinveer coming in, or had a Shinveer coming in until the red time wave came up. So Haiku knows where Shalka is, and Haiku is actually building up at the base where Shalka is sending out his... He's sending out two marines and a sop out to the 9 o'clock expansion where Haiku is building up. There are no defenses there, and Haiku has not built up his natural either. He's built up his third here, and that's really about it. He has not built up his natural at all, and his main only has LC investment. He also doesn't have a lot of vehicles built. He has a couple Zion Pulsars coming in, but that's it so far. He's at 343 mark, and he's getting Zion Pulsars up, getting a lot of... RPs, and this is what he should be doing, and Haiku really should be doing this. This is the correct strategy on Desecrated Temple. However, it looks like Shalka actually went by the... Yeah, he went by the expansion from the looks of it. No, he... he okay, he must have messed up, and re, he's corrected that. And he's going to see the natural for the 9 o'clock expansion. He's going to see the Vector RPs there, and he's going to be able to destroy them before they really do too much. Which is a bit of a shame, but the Zion Pulses are coming in anyway. Haiku will be able to defend that. And he's not getting a skip teleport, he just hasn't really focused on them. He is focusing more on getting more RPs in his main base. And he does see the units coming in, so Shalka definitely be able to get damage from both sides. The blue time move will stop that 
damage from coming in before it actually becomes relevant. But uh, an HFC, however, is coming into the main base and will be... Sorry, the main base. The 9 o'clock main, I should say. And will be dealing some damage. Another HFC is coming down through the 3 o'clock base and towards Haiku's main. Haiku is going to be building up Stolen's natural. He hasn't changed his strategy here at all. Now, interestingly, Shaika, Shalka actually has fewer RPs right now than Haiku, even though he's playing CISO, and CISO typically will have more RPs at this point. However, he has more harassment potential because Haiku does not have skip teleport and the Zion Pulsers, and he only has a couple Zion Pulsers. He would need more, really, but he doesn't have more right now. He doesn't have any. So he's not building anything. He is... He has two Zion Pulsers, but he doesn't have... He doesn't have a lot of LC and KP anyway. He can build another Zion Pulser, maybe, but it's really risky. I'm just surprised he did not take his own natural. Shalka, on the other hand, is taking has taken his natural. Like I said, he's not taking any other base. I'm a bit surprised at that. He does have a marine going down. It is going towards... Actually, going towards this expansion right here. So he will be expanding to his third, which is a much safer choice for him. Like I said, Haiku, once again, not just because it's natural, but also because it's a safer choice. Haiku, however, is building up another foundation over here. It will be soon. He, Shalka is about 30 seconds ahead of Haiku, so we saw that foundation coming up before Haiku actually managed to get a chance to work on it. Will likely be an ATHC, but anyway, Zion Veer is going to be destroyed. Haiku is moving. No, he actually has moved his strategy a bit. He's only going to be expanding towards the QP crates, hiding away from the Marine and Sop. The Marine and Sop are going to be walking away, completely missing the Zion Veer, so now Haiku will be able to expand safely there. At least until Shaka, since another scouting force, which he likely will. A couple, an ATHC is coming in again, and the other ATHC that's attacking the 9 o'clock main is now attacking the third between the 9 and the 12 expansions. And here's the foundation I talked about. Another foundation coming in. This one's more likely to be an ACC because, well, okay, really the best ACC spot is here because then you can have a depot here, the ACC here, and then the annex is connected to two depots. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. This is the most likely ACC spot, and like I, get, like I said, Zion Pulsar is not being upgraded to skip teleport yet. I don't know if Haiku is planning on working up to gate tech and using that to teleport, or what exactly he's planning. Regardless, he doesn't have anything to detect ATCs either. No Shin Veers, and he doesn't have an ATC, so he has no Shin Turchers. Here's a Bastion coming up that will be able to detect the, the ATHCs, and another Bastion as well. So two Bastions coming up, and it looks like this is gonna... This is the most likely spot to have an ACC. It's an okay spot to have an ACC, because you can't really have a depot here easily, but you, if I think if the RPs move away, there's enough room. Regardless... Now Haiku is expanding to his natural, he does have his third, like I said, it's being heavily attacked. The 9 o'clock isn't being heavily attacked, the HCC is coming up, and the Zion Veer over at the 9 o'clock natural has been killed, so Shalka did take care of that Zion Veer, and is now expanding a bit more on his own. Shalka, actually no he's not, he's gotten this expansion that I mentioned before, the base, the third, between him and the 3 o'clock main, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. Right now Shalka actually has a... I think about even economy-wise. Haiku, on the other hand, like I said, he does have his natural being set up. He is... He did get a lot of resources from here. He, well, okay, he got about... Now, 350 LC... Actually, no, about 2,000 LC out of this base alone. So, that's... At least if I'm counting that correct. Sorry, I counted that wrong. He got about... Sorry, because that's... Every one of these numbers here, that's 10 LC. So, he got about, like... Well, so 500 LC, I'd say. About 70 per... No, I'm being stupid. 300 LC. Bye. 300 LC or so, which is good. That's still a good amount. It's not great, but the RPs definitely pay for themselves. Not a huge profit, mind you, but they pay for themselves. Now, the Haiku's design pulsers are being set up. The ATC, however, is attacking the natural, and this is where it's going to be a bit of a problem for harassment. Like I said, I'm just surprised he has not built an ACC yet. I don't know why he isn't building an ACC, because he can afford a Zion Turch... Or, not Zion, sorry, a Shin Turcher very quickly. But he isn't going for it. I don't know why he's not going for it, because he really needs that. That's like, that's so necessary right now for him to counter this. Martank's coming in from Shalka. ATC's coming in still from Shalka and a tank as well. So Shalka is definitely focused on the Martanks. That is going to be huge, being able to attack with Martanks. Haiku is not at all focused on this. He, I'm so surprised he's not getting the ACC. He really needs to get that. I'm not sure where he's focused on. He's focused on moving these RPs away. He, he isn't doing much because he has he has very little chrono energy. He has like one order's worth, and he's just using up his orders when he gets them, trying frantically to build up, building more Zion Pulsers. 
trying to get a force to take care of the ATCs, but really what he needs to do is take care of the ATCs as a, well cloak detectors. That's, that's what he really needs. Immediately the ATCs are starting to decloak, and Mar tanks are coming in. The Mar tanks are going to be a problem though. The best counter to that is going to be the Zion Turchers, but the Zion Pulsers, the numbers he has, could help. It's just Haiku is in a really bad spot. And he, like I said, really needs that Shin Turcher, although Tornado's coming in might change that. Now he's getting Gay Tech, and that's what I figured. He's waiting for Gay Tech to get the teleportation because there was no way he's going to do much without Skip Teleport right now. This map's fairly large. Skip Teleport's kind of. And he wasn't moving around, so I was guessing he was going for Skip Teleport. Now, admittedly, one thing he could be going for is really risky, but he could be going for Gay Tech followed by just a Slipgate. Like, getting a Slipgate here, really defensible spot. And yes, that's what he's doing. He's actually going for exactly that, getting a Slipgate over on this foundation and using that probably to chronoport his units back to save this entire thing. I'm honestly kind of surprised. I can just kind of see the rationale of a chrono rush, but this is a pretty like chrono rush. Nine minutes in? Like seriously? That's that's not a chrono rush. That's just that's a chronoport attack. That's a, a focus on chronoports, but not a chrono rush. By no means is that a chrono rush. Shaka, however, is about a minute and a half behind. He is attacking with the ATCs. And the Bastions see them enough that Design Pulsers can actually take care of them. But there's a lot of damage coming in, and it looks like Haiku... Well, Shog's just retreating entirely. Those ATCs won't be able to do much damage. And yes, Haiku is moving all of his forces back towards this Slipgate, and my guess is going to be Chronoport. He's... I'm best using he's going to Chronoport back, try to harass, attack this, defend this expansion here to keep it his own, and basically use that to retconomize. Uh, use that as a way to get his economy back. Alternately, he could harass directly, but I seriously doubt that. I'm betting he's going to go for that base. That being said, I don't think he has a chance. I think that base has been destroyed by the time he'd be able to chronoport to, but it's possible he's going to try to defend that. He's possibly going to just try to harass outright. And, oh no, there actually are a couple RPs that would have survived. But, you know, he is in fact going for a harassment attack straight to the main base. Well, roundabout way to the main base. Attacking directly, shock at this point in time. Doesn't have a huge amount of resources in reserve. He has a couple hundred LC in reserve, but for all the units he's going to be building, that's going to be very difficult to deal with. However, there is enough units coming in for Shalkus. Shalkus is going for a massive attack early on enough that he will be able to stop this Slipgate from dealing a whole lot of damage. And you now Haiku isn't really changing this up. He is just watching the attack again, but that isn't going to do much good because unfortunately, at the best, at best for Haiku, he's going to get a paradox. Although it looks like some units do manage to chronoport later on. Shalka is actually jumping towards the future, and Shalka at this point in time has chronoporting of his own. He has a chronoporter somewhere, obviously. He does have a chronoporter, presumably, because he has paused. That generally means he is going to be doing a chronoport. And it looks like he was planning on doing a chronoport, but he might have messed up. He does have gate tech back here, however. Watching this attack coming in, getting rid of the forces that Haiku had. And Haiku, like I said, managed to chronoport some units. He actually, did he just manage to chronoport? No, he managed to chronoport a bit more than the Design Pulsar, but that is... This Slipgate's almost destroyed, and now he's going to be able to chronoport back the Design Pulsar, deal a bit more damage, but I don't see him dealing enough damage. However, we see the Red Time Wave is getting more damage coming in for Haiku. We are focusing on Haiku right now, so this blue is really good for Haiku. However, it doesn't seem to be a lifesaver for him. It's... Oh, it's this. Or something along those lines. Yeah, his main base harassment is dealing a lot of damage. Shaka is losing a lot of forces that are... They have it. Lose six reserves, not a huge deal right now. He only has 18. He can easily deal with that. Unfortunately for Shalka, this is too little too late. The Mar tanks were already built. Everything's already built. He doesn't have a base anymore. The best he can hope for is you know, somehow being able to just win with four Zion Bolts and a Zion Turcher. This Zion Turcher is almost deep. It's almost on close as well. Only has 13 energy left. It's got like about 20 seconds left of cloak. That is nothing. So right now, Shalka's only hope... Sorry, Haiku's only hope. Shalka has one. Haiku's only hope is to be able to harass away everything. He has no Shin Veers... Sorry, Shin Pulsers to make Shin Veers from... Or, sorry, Shin Anything. Shin Veers are the main unit, but Shin Anything. And it looks like Shalka is actually getting... The Blue Time Wave is going to be working in his favor because, of course, fewer units were Chrono Parted back, so less damage being dealt. And really... Like I said, these units are kind of living on board of time. The units that actually came back, there's only about three units here that came back in the first place. Those aren't going to be doing too much. They're going to be doing some, but not enough. Not enough to defend. Haiku, if he had Chrono Cloned to defend, he actually might have had a chance, because those Martanics probably would have gone down in the process. 
But anyway, Haiku has given up, realizing that he's going to be losing a lot of the units that he had. So Haiku has given up. That is our second game tonight. So we're just going to close the stream down for a second. And when we come back, it'll be the third game, last game tonight. So I will see you guys shortly.